All right, everybody. All right. This is Zane with Really Easy AI. And uh, woof, we're headed into part three, working with embedding. So we had gone through some of the conceptual stuff. And now we're getting into some of the deeper stuff in working with embedding. So, um, yeah, this one's going to be a little bit. I honestly don't know where part three is going to end. We'll just see how long it takes and how far we can get. And then I'll chop it up into parts four, five, six, and 20 billion. There's going to be a few of these. Um, and some of them, I'm not going to lie, are going to get pretty deep technically. Uh, particularly when we get to the part of working with machine learning and doing some stuff there. So uh, strap on your, your, uh, your hats, your thinking hats, and let's get into this. So here we go. All right, so we have our quote. Using quotations is important in the writing process because they add strong evidence when used appropriately. However, embedding quotations effectively into sentences is just as important as finding the correct quotations to use. Correctly embedded quotations move the reader from the quoted text back into the paragraph smoothly. There you go. That's from the San Jose State University Writing Center. Good quote. That's actually from their paper on how to do embedded quotes. All right, just a reminder, if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe, like, comment, uh, do all those things. Just the fact that you're watching this is great, and I do appreciate you being here. But the YouTube algorithm is a little bit of an asshole, and so it really doesn't, you know, it's like, okay, well, they viewed a big deal. Is If you do anything else, just click the like button. Just something as simple as that radically changes how this video gets out to people in the YouTube algorithm. So if you like the content, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. All those help boost the algorithm so other people can enjoy the content as well. I really do appreciate it. If you really like the content, think about becoming a member. Uh, we have three levels, uh, artificial narrow intelligence, level one. Uh, we've got loyalty badges and emojis for uh, folks at that level. Uh, artificial general intelligence, level two. We've got all kinds of stuff there. Priority reply to comments, member only polls, member shout outs, photos and status updates. You can see pictures of my dog. Uh, but the main reason most people do it is early access to new videos. So I queue my videos up. A lot of people like to binge watch my videos. So uh, what we'll do, what they'll do is get this access and then boom, as soon as they come out, they can just binge watch all my videos. Uh, right now I have like, God knows, like 10 queued up uh, for the next week or two. So. People like to binge watch those. And then ASI Level 3, don't have anybody there yet. That, that first person is really going to get some love. That's exclusive member-only videos and member-only chat rooms. So excited about that. Um, and the way you join, of course, is you just click on the little join button next to the subscribe uh, to join and become a member. All right. So, yay. Uh, let's talk about embedding in action. So we talked about it. Now we're going to put embedding to use. And so we're going to be doing the uh, Amazon food reviews for this one. So we're going to be looking at Amazon food reviews. Uh, I do include a link as always. You're going to have a link to the data and a link to everything you see here, including all the sections. I include links to all of this in the documentation where you can uh, look this stuff up for yourself as well. Now, just so you know, we're not going to get the entire 254 meg uh, download for the file. Uh, although I do encourage you to play with it. It's pretty cool, but it just extends the timeline. So we're going to be working with a much smaller one. We've basically taken that, chopped it down to a thousand reviews instead of the, the 20 kajillion that it has. How many does it have? 500,000? We just chopped it down to a thousand, and that's what we're working with, just to make things go quicker and easier. It's just a function of time. That's all it is. And honestly, for you guys, I guess it wouldn't matter. I guess I could have done it because it really wouldn't have mattered that much, would it? I could have done the whole 500,000 and <laughs> just paused it. But there you go. Um, all right. So uh, let's go into the first demo, creating embedding. So we're going to get into the first demo, creating an embedding. And so here, first and foremost, I want to show you, we've only got two files you're, you uh, need to have to do all the stuff I'm going to be showing you. The main one is the Fine Food Re Reviews 1K. It's a CSV file, very simple, and I, I do include it in my GitHub as well, so you can grab that. Later on, we'll do news samples, so I do have some uh, news samples here as well. It's also a CSV file. 
that's it. That's the only two files you need. The rest will be generated as we go as we start doing embeddings. So going through some use cases, here we show some representative use cases. Uh, we're gonna use Amazon Fine Foods for some of it, uh, quite a bit of it, but we'll also switch to the new stuff, as I said earlier. Um, and then later on, we're just gonna get super deep into some things. Now I have organized, uh, I am gonna give you this Jupyter Notebook, but I've organized it a little differently than I've done in the past. I went ahead and decided to put all the pip installs that you need to do up top, so they'll all be here and you'll have access to those. And this isn't a complete list. Yes, I'm still finishing some stuff out there. Uh, it's complete enough for us to get through this session. And then I'll have all the imports, all the imports for the entire notebook uh, and uh, this notebook and any other associated notebooks at the top as well. They're all here and they're organized into sections. And the reason I did that is I really just kind of wanted to make that process a little easier, get it done up front so we could just focus on the code. I also go ahead and just pop the client, get a client object uh, to OpenAI, make sure you have an, an environment variable called OpenAI API key. And really that's the three big ones, right? So we make sure everything's installed, we make sure you've got your imports, and then we make sure you got a client, and the rest is, here we go. So let's see the power of embeddings, right? And the first thing we wanna do is see what trying to answer questions without using RAG looks like. So here we go. We know we're gonna be asking questions about Amazon food reviews. So we're gonna query, our query is gonna say what people hated their food in this case. And we do a system prompt says you answer questions about Amazon find food reviews. And then for the user query, of course, we just put that in there, right? I guess I could just put it in there verbatim, couldn't I? I don't know why I'm messing with this extra variable. Oh, that's kind of weird. I wonder why I'm doing that. Let's, uh, yeah, why do that? Let's see. I don't think I'm hosing my code by doing this. Let's just go ahead and take this and stick it down there. There we go. And then I'll, I'll put it in single quotes. I, I generally prefer using double quotes, but I find myself shifting between single and double. It really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. There we go. We can just take out a whole variable there. No need for that. All right. Um, so here I forgot to clear all my outputs, but let's go ahead then and we're going to see what it looks like to try to answer questions for Amazon without having um, any retrieval augmented uh, information for it to use. So it's going to run off. It's going to be like, uh, I don't have any Amazon food reviews. I don't have access to specific user data or individual reviews from Amazon. However, in general, negative reviews on few products, blah, 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 blah. See there? It's like, dude, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What the hell are you talking about? Because we haven't given it the data. So now we're going to go through giving it the data. The data set uh, normally contains a total of uh, 500,000 food reviews. Amazon users left up to October 2012. We're going to use a subset of 1,000 most recent reviews for illustration purposes. Reviews are uh, in English and tend to be positive or negative. Each review has a product ID, user ID, score, review title, uh, which is known as the summary, and review body, which is known as the text. For example, product ID, user ID, score, uh, which is like the star rating, five stars, one star, Good quality dog food is the title and text. I have bought uh, several of the blah, 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 blah. You get the idea, right? People leave reviews. All right. Now, we're going to combine the review title and the review text uh, into a single combined text. The model will encode this combined text and output a single vector embedding. That's what we're doing, getting ready to do now. Now, in order to accomplish this and do some other things, I have, for illustrative purposes, created a get file size function uh, that we're going to have. So you can see the relative file sizes of using the different models. So let's start with the first one. So the first one uh, here, we're going to define a path to the input data file. That's this guy right here, find food reviews. We're going to load it into a data frame. We're going to select only the relevant columns, time, product ID, user ID, score, summary, and text. We're gonna drop any missing values, any rows with missing values. We're gonna get rid of any duplicates. Um, and then we're gonna create a new column called combined that's going to uh, grab the um, title. We're actually appending on title and, and then grabbing the summary. 
and then uh, appending the text and grabbing the text. Now, there's a couple of ways you can refer to these. One way is like this by doing dot summary and dot text. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I put it in here because I was getting OpenAI to help me with some of the code, but I prefer doing it this way. Um, you know, doing it like that. Uh, that's that's generally how I like to do it. Uh, it really doesn't matter six and one half a dozen the other, but I'm just I'm just not a fan of that syntax. So I'm going to change that up real quick and refer to it. You know, let's see uh, text. And notice there's there's no difference. The code works either way. I've run it the whole time the other way. But I want you to see me changing it up, and I may change it throughout because this is how the way I prefer to do it. It is it's not a compliance thing. It's not anything but personal preference on my part. So you certainly do not have to do it if you don't want to. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run this, and you'll notice now we get this lovely little uh, table, time, product ID, user ID, score, summary, text, and then combined where it has title colon and then content colon. So now we've got a combined. So we're going to take the title and content, put them together into a combined column, and that's actually what we're going to encode. So now we've got uh, the title and content combined. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do an embedding. Now we're going to start with the small embedding model. The small embedding model, of course, only has uh, a, I forget how many dimensions it has. I think it's just a thousand or so dimensions. Hang on, let's look it up. I can't believe I left that out. Let's see. Um, all right. Uh, da, 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 should have our dimensions here. No, that's measurements. Where's the dimension size? Does it mention it? I thought I mentioned it in here. I would really like to know the dimension size. Yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, we've already talked about that, I think. But let's see. Da da da. Small average. No. All right. Let me go back. Dimension size. Oh, here we go. I default the length of the embedding vector. Yeah, 1536 for text embedding small and 3072 for text embedding large. That's dimensions per word, right? So remember that's dimensions um, you know, per word. We've seen this before. So that's 1536 per word or for the small and 3072 per word for the large, per word. Let's make sure we're clear on that. That is per word. All right, let's go ahead then and get back to our code. So yeah, about 1,000 and 3,000 roughly. 1,000 for small, 3,000 for large. All right, so um, we've got this thing. We're ready to do our embedding. So we've got our table. We, we created our combined column. Now what we're going to do is I've defined a function called get embedding. It's just going to use the small one, and it's going to go through, replace, um, basically replace text, uh, replace new lines in the text with spaces for consistent formatting. And then it creates the embedding. There you go. Uses our model. And so away we go with that. And then it applies the get embedding function to each entry in the combined column. So it goes through our data set, right, our data frame, and, and goes through each combined entry and embeds it. And then it spits out a, the, um, a CSV with the embeddings in it. So find food reviews with embeddings, 1K. Uh, that's what I called it in this case, uh, CSV. So it spits out this one with embeddings. Maybe I should have called it small embeddings. Might want to change that later on. We can, not a problem. Uh, but that's what I'm calling it for now, just embeddings. All right, so we go ahead and run this. Now this may take a few minutes. Notice I note that that may take a couple minutes to run. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here so you guys don't have to suffer through that. And then we'll resume and then we'll see how long it took to run. All right, all right. So it took about two minutes uh, or so for it to run for me. So your mileage may vary depending on your computer and graphics card, but uh, that's what I got. So let's go ahead and review what we got. 
So now we have the uh, all the columns we had before: time, product ID, user ID, score, summary, uh, text combined. But now we have this new embedding column, which is the embedded version of the combined uh, all the data in the combined column. So it takes all that text and embeds it. Now remember, this is a small embedding model, so it's about a, a thousand um, a thousand dimensions per word. Okay, so that is the small one, and now it's embedded. Now, uh, let's go ahead and get the size of the file that it created. By the way, here's the file it created right here. Find food reviews with embeddings. So we're gonna go ahead and get that file size real quick. That's why I included this special function here. So that embedding, uh, all of that is about 33 megs of embedding. Okay, yep, yeah, not, not bad for embedding. Now, let's do a large embedding. Now this one obviously is gonna take longer to run because it's we're going from 1,000 to about 3,000 now dimensions per word. So 3,000 dimensions per word. So we're gonna go ahead and run this and then I'll get it started. Um, and I'll go ahead and pause and then resume when it's done. All right, boys and girls. Okay, so it took uh, about three minutes uh, or so to run that one. So not exponentially more than the last one. The last one took, what do we say, two minutes, and this one took uh, large, so small took two minutes, large took three minutes, so not too bad. And we got a crap ton more dimensions out of it, right? So three times more dimensions. We went from a thousand dimensions per word to 3,000 dimensions per word. So very, very good. Use the text embedding three large. There it is. Again, time, product ID, user ID, score, summary, text. I don't know why they call it summary. I wish they'd just call it title, but whatever. Combined and then embedding. So there it is. Uh, now again, I won't show you all the embeddings. We've been down that road already, but there you have it. So that is the large embedding. Now the question is, how big is that file? And notice I created a file called Find Food Reviews with Embeddings Large to distinguish it from the other one that was using small. All right, so that's double the size, right? 66.51 megs. The last one was 33, if I recall. Yep, 33.43, so about double the size. Uh, uh, so, you know, yeah, kind of, I almost expected it to be triple, but it wasn't triple, it was double. All right. So that is what it looks like to do an embedding. Doing an embedding is pretty straightforward. Basically, you just create a helper function. You call it whatever you want to call it to indicate that you're embedding. Uh, it takes in your text that you're going to embed. You indicate your model. And then you, here we go. You know, just you know, do whatever cleanup you need to do. Request the embedding for the clean text to return the embedding. Client.embeddings.create. Input the texts input the model, indicate the, the data that you're grabbing, and it, get the embedding. So basically, you know, it creates, and then we once it creates, we grab the data zero embedding. So it's doing it all in one line. We were doing it before, if you were calling code, uh, in several different lines. Now I'm combining everything into one line just to make it easier and pack it into a function. But it's the same result. All right, and then once we get those embeddings, then you know every time we call the function, uh, we get an embedding back, and then we put that embedding in the combined column. So we create a new column called embedding. We run through the combined entries. We apply the get embedding large function every time to combined, and away it goes. That's what this is by doing, by the way, this lambda function. It's basically just saying, look, every time you go to an entry in combined, apply this function called get embedding large and then give it whatever's in combined as x that's that's all it's saying there so we're just passing it x and and you may be wondering why aren't we passing the model well we set the default model to large so we didn't have to pass it the model it could take a different model if that's what we wanted if we wanted to pass in a different model we could have done that but i didn't bother with that in this case Although I guess maybe I could have. There's certainly optimizations we can do to the code. Okay, but there you have it. That's what's going on here. Um, that's how we do embeddings. Uh, pretty straightforward. We, we, we embed a whole bunch of stuff in a data frame. We get the embeddings out. We put them in a file of some kind or a store of some type. We'll look at different kinds of stores later on. 
For now, we're just doing text files, CSV files. All right, now, once you've done that, the big question is, now what? How do you load the data? Well, loading the data is actually pretty easy. Uh, once you have the data, it's real simple. You just have to load the data into a data frame. Here we do pandas read.csv, or read underscore CSV, rather. And I'll just read the embeddings large CSV in. That's, that's pretty easy. However, you have to remember when it dumps it, it dumps it and that, that embeddings column is just turned into text. So when you read this back in, it thinks the embeddings column is text. It should not be treated as text. It needs to be converted to an array, specifically a NumPy array. That's what you see here in P. So we've got to convert it. So NumPy, right? And that's what we're going to do here. So we say uh, load, uh, DF load embedding for each embedding, uh, change embedding for embedding, do apply um, eval dot apply NumPy array. And that's going to get our stuff in there. So there you have it. Evaluate the given source contacts of globals and locals. Source may be a string. And this line of code then will actually then go ahead and convert the embedding column into a NumPy array that can then be manipulated later on. All right, uh, I think we're ready to run this. So let's see how to, now that we've dumped it, let's see how to bring it back to life. This is how you're gonna bring it back. And really the only thing you have to do is just load it and then convert at a minimum the em embedded column to a NumPy array. Let's go ahead and do that. And that'll take a little bit. It shouldn't take too awful long, but I'm gonna go ahead and pause just in case. And then I'll, uh, we'll take, no, never mind. It's over 10 seconds. I didn't think it was gonna take that long. Never mind. Never mind. So there you go. It's all converted and we're ready to go. So again, we have time, product ID, user ID, score, summary, text combined, and then the embedding, which is now a NumPy array. So it can be manipulated later on and used for other things. All right, let's go back to our slides then. That's creating embeddings. And then we did loading embeddings just now and how, how we, you need to remember to convert your embedding column to a NumPy array. Now, don't worry if you're not super familiar with what a NumPy array is or even NumPy in general. Just take the piece of code I've given you and remember that that embedding column cannot remain text when you load it up. It's got to be converted to an array, specifically a NumPy array. Now, let's talk about dimensions. Now, if you recall, we learned before that, in theory at least, uh, you can get uh, reduce the embedding size on some of the models and get similar results. Specifically, we found out that if you took the embedding large model which is a more sophisticated model and reduced its dim dimensions to a thousand, you know, 1024, so a thousand, um, a, a thousand dimensions, that you'd still get a really good score, even better than doing text embedding small at uh, 1500. So we save a little space by doing it. Now we do lose precision, do not lose sight of that fact. Reducing dimensions 100% of the time means you're going to lose something. You generally want more dimensions if you can get it. However, depending on what you're trying to do, it may not be that big a deal. So you want to definitely play with reducing the dimensions and playing with different models. Notice that the text embedding small at 1536 is not as good as the text embedding large at 1024 according to this. All right, got it. So let's do a demo on how to reduce the dimensions, which actually is pretty easy too, right? Uh, here we go. Using larger embeddings, for example, storing them in a vector store for retrieval generally costs more and consumes more compute, memory, and storage than using smaller embeddings. Both of the new embedding models were trained with a technique that allows the developers to trade off performance and cost uh, of using embeddings. Specifically, the developers could shorten the embeddings, i.e. remove some numbers from the end of the sequence, without the embedding losing its concept representing properties. But that's it, concept representing. You're always going to lose something by reducing the dimension. So that's a choice you're gonna have to make. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and uh, I've created another function 
Um, but here we're going to begin by reading in the food reviews, getting into a data frame called DF Reduced Dims, dropping the you know the missing values, dropping the duplicates, basically what we've done before. So we go ahead and run that. Now we got a data frame called DF Reduced Dims that has all that stuff in it: time, product ID, user ID, score, summary, text, and combine. We haven't done the embedding yet. Now I created a function called get embedding reduced dims. And for that one, what we do at the point where we tell it, hey, we're using the large model, we also indicate that the dimensions are only going to be 1024. So we reduce the dimensions here in the arguments for the model, for the create function, actually. So we're, we're giving it the text, giving it the model, and then saying the dimensions for this one are 1024. Only give me 1024 dimensions. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And this will take a little bit, but not too awful long, but I'm still going to pause and then we'll come back when it's done. All right, so that took about two minutes and 41 seconds. Uh, not too bad, not too bad at all. And so now we have used the large language model with reduced dimensions, a thousand dimensions, and we've got time, product ID, user ID, score, summary, text, combined, and then the embedding of the combined. Very, very, very cool. All right, let's go ahead and get the size of that data file while we're at it. And that one comes and ends in a nice lightweight 22 uh, megs. So not bad at all. Okay, I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and stop there. And it's been almost 30 minutes. And then we'll jump into the real world examples and start going through some of those. But uh, the first part was getting the embeddings. And that's what we were focused on at first. How do we get embeddings? And all that code will be available to you. Take it, run with it, use it to your heart's content, and really absorb it. Um, change up the code. Use my you know, code as a base and then make a, a different notebook. Throw that code in it and then play with it till you break it and then fix it. That's how you're going to learn. Uh, by the way, uh, I am giving you modified code from a lot of stuff that uh, with the links I have in the slide deck uh, from uh, OpenAI's documentation, which really, really blows, by the way. Um, it, I mean, it's just just terrible. And uh, so I'm taking it, I'm hammering through it and making it, trying to get it to a spot where you guys can get it and, and run with it and make it as uh, simple as I can. Hopefully you're getting something out of it. If you are... Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, as I said, or become a member. I'd love to have you. We'll stop here, and we'll pick up with uh, part four in the next session. Have a good one. See you next time.